So today we have one of the country's leading experts, the man who wrote the book on Omnichannel, Lionel Binney with us to share with us his thoughts on Omnichannel. Through the book uh, research, I, I came to the conclusion that there's two, and other people have validated this, there's two basic functions of shopping, if you want to really break it down, discovery and fulfillment. So discovery is, is the research that you do to decide what you want to buy, and then fulfillment means actually the, the transaction. So before the internet, those two functions were completely merged. You know, a sh you went to the store to discover what you wanted to buy and then you bought it. Um, I mean, maybe you read consumer reports or did some research, but for the most part, you went to the store and you relied on the salesperson's advice and the store packaging to tell you what you wanted to buy. But the internet has broken those two things down so, so that the discovery aspect you know, it can be separate from the fulfillment aspect. So what that means to stores is that stores now, you know, the name, the store is uh, literally means, you know, it used to be a storehouse. In other words, you went to the store because that's where stuff was, right? It was all stacked up at the general store. So, you know, that's what the store used to be. But now <clears throat> that aspect of distribution of actually getting a product, you know, can come from a warehouse. It comes from Amazon or it comes, it might come from a store in terms of buying, you know, getting an order from a local target or something. But um, so basically discovery can happen on online or it can happen in the store and fulfillment obviously can happen online or in the store. Um, and the, the internet has broken this up so that consumers can decide, you know, how they want to play this um, and do everything online or only partially online. And then this, this goes to this con these two concepts. There's a guy called Joseph Pine who wrote um, a book called The Experience Economy. And he's a very good thinker about how the economy has evolved from like um, basic resources like food and lumber and oil. And the more advanced economies that we live in now are essentially experience economies. So people, you know, we, we've all heard about this, people buy experiences, not products. So the, this attempts to, and he came up with these two labels of time well spent and time well saved. So the idea is that shopping for these more sort of elite, unique, experiential products is itself an experience that we cherish. So that would be somebody going to an antique fair or, or Powell's books would be a perfect example. You know, to browse used books um, is time well spent. It's fun. You know, it's not transactional. And then the bottom left quadrant is time well saved. So we are very, very happy to save ourselves shopping to the store to buy, you know, cans of cat food and, you know, paper towels or things that we, you know, we, are, we love Amazon because it saves us time. And, you know, the, and, and that's very valid. So, I mean, massive amounts of the internet are going here, e-commerce. And I would say that the COVID tie-in you know, it's not just time well spent, but it's sort of safety. You know, in other words, we are very, very happy to save ourselves trips to the store to buy uh, products that would just be a chore to buy. So the, you know, this is sort of getting into how people think about shopping. So we often view shopping, you know, for these sort of uh, elite and, and unique and artisan products as fun. And we do it socially with our family and friends. But we're but when we can sit on our couch with our laptop and order things, we're very happy to save time. So that's you know that sort of ties it all together. Yeah, I don't. I I think there's some opportunities for like uh, retail reconfigurations, some really creative like a circular store. You know, like circuit. You know, circles, not these boring aisles yeah. or. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you put maybe you put the produce at the begin at the middle of the circle. You know, I don't know. I mean, this yeah, we got from there. Yeah, 
there's a lot of lack of imagination in how stores are laid out. Now, maybe, maybe they, you know, have experimented and, you know, went back to basics, who knows? But I mean, um, you know, there's opportunities to be really different in retail than, than, you know, there are much, there are many more formats that big people can do, you know, like coffee, like I said, coffee inside a clothing store, you know, all these unique juxtapositions that can take advantage of, uh, of these ways people want to shop.